I've been Iraq uh, three times. Uh, twice we did comedy for the troops. The third time was vacation. The third time, I just wanted to see it. And it is nice. They have one tree. It's gorgeous. So you wait in line for that. And then you fight your way back to the plane. So it's like a hiking trip of sorts. When we did comedy for the troops, we'd go over there and they would have uh, a lot of like small bases. They only have like 40 troops at these bases. So they would have like a lot of makeshift stuff for these guys, like their bathrooms. They had pipes dug in the ground and that's what they would pee into. And then if they did the other, they had a bag. They called it a wag bag. So it was very awkward. Like I went up to a soldier, I go, where's your restroom at? And he was like, you gotta go number one or number two. It's like, well, I don't really see how that's your business. <laughs> And to be honest, I might mix it up, so... <laughs> why don't you let me decide, all right? We have barely made eye contact. <laughs> I gotta go to uh, Bahrain, too, which I uh, learned was a country when I got there. I thought it was the guy we were meeting, and... <laughs> it was... <laughs> when you go to Bahrain, you go and you stay on an army base, but there you can actually leave the base and go out to the city. So they tell you, they're like, look, if you go out there, it's safe, just don't draw attention to yourself. So they were like, don't wear American t-shirts. And I was like, all right, like, that's fine, no American t-shirts. So what are you gonna do about the white on my skin? <laughs> that's gonna be more of a problem. I don't want them to come up to me like, excuse me, are you Muslim? Uh, Southern Muslim, actually. <laughs> Yeah, my dad was a deacon, so I don't know if that counts. I did go to church growing up. I grew up in Tennessee, and uh, we went to church. I actually tried to, it's funny, I tried to play basketball for my high school team, but I got cut, so I had to play for my church because the church cannot cut you. They have to let you play. <laughs> they could cut you. You'd be pretty bad if they're like, look, we think you're good, but Jesus does not think you're that good. <laughs> He is our captain, so. <laughs> Church ball was a lot different, because we played, it was, uh, we played half court, no three point line. We played on carpet, that's your first sign. It's not gonna count. And they didn't even give us a basketball. We didn't have a basketball. We would just stand there and play on honesty. <laughs> You'd be like, I just made it. It was like, oh, that's a good shot. You're really good. <laughs> I stole it. I forgive you for stealing it. It was, it was moral points. It counts later. Are y'all gonna go watch the Nathan's hot dog eating contest? Did everybody get their tickets for that? It's exciting. I think it's free anyway, but. I remember the first time I saw the hot dog eating contest. The first time I saw it, you would see a lot of skinny people and then they would show like a huge fat guy so I was like, all right, you know, obviously he is gonna win. He probably ate on the way here. <laughs> but he does not win. Kobayashi or Joey Chestnut, two very in-shape guys. So that means fat people are not even good at what they're good at. <laughs> Who would've thought? Huh? Who would've? I'm married and that is uh, whatever, but you do it. <laughs> You know what marriage is like? Marriage is like, you ever go to a concert and you see a mosh pit and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go get in that mosh pit. But then once you get in it, you're like, poof, I do not want to be in this mosh pit. <laughs> at all. I am gonna leave and go get some beer. Then the mosh pit's like, hey, you drank last night. You're like, all right, mosh pit, why don't you get off my back and let me live my life. I always get home late doing comedy and my wife will be asleep. So I'll go in, I fix something to eat, I'll watch TV, I'll be home for like an hour. Then I'll hear my wife from the bedroom and she'll be like, Nate, is that you? You know, you better hope to God it's me. <laughs> you have let some murderer get quite comfortable in this house. He is eating. And if someone broke into our house, I don't, we, we, we don't have a gun to protect us. So like, oh, I have a pocket knife. That's what I have, which is gonna do nothing. I could hope to aggravate him at best. <laughs> like I'd cut him and he'd be like, you just ripped my shirt and then he'd murder both of us. That's best case scenario. 
with a pocket knife. Because I don't know how to use this knife in the middle of the day, much less I'm gonna wake up out of a dead sleep and have some kind of knife skill I've never had before. <laughs> and it's a flip out knife. You're supposed to go one motion, but I always have to pull it the rest of the way. So <laughs> he would be, he'd just walk in and be like, oh, I'm not really that nervous about that. You don't know what you're doing. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> it's just there for show. Uh, so what we have to do, me and my wife, we have to sleep strategically in our bed to prepare for an attack. So my wife, she sleeps next to the door because it's my strategy. So, yeah, I drew it up. So the plan is, is she's next to the door. So when the guy comes in, she's gonna lunge at him whether she's awake or not, but she will lunge. <laughs> and she's from Alabama, she's pretty scrappy. So she will put up a pretty good fight with this guy. At least a good enough fight that I can be practicing with my knife on my side. I can already have it out. He won't even see the, that part. So when he comes to me, I'll be like, I don't know if you looked over here while you fought my wife but that used to be one whole pillow. I'm just saying, it's your call at this point. I've been practicing a lot. Now, we don't have kids yet, but I would like to have kids. I would like to have kids just to have a friend in the house at this point would be nice. Is that bad or <laughs> does that mean it's going good? Just tell me if it's, it's fine. You know what it is, marriage is, men are not good at marriage. We're just not prepared for marriage. Women, you are very prepared. Like, look at all the toys you played with. Like, when you're a kid, they give you, when you're a baby and you're born, they give you a baby doll. So they give you a baby when you're a baby. They're like, look, I would probably start figuring this out. This is where it's going. And then they give you Barbie and Ken, so you have to deal with all that drama that they have. Then women would play house. They would just play house. They would fake vacuum. When I see my wife vacuum now, I'm like, she's living her childhood dream. She has made it. Hey, I can't compete. Because as a guy, we didn't have any of that. We played uh, Fort. We had to keep everybody out of where we are. And the only toys we had were Transformers and Ninja Turtles. Those are not even real things. None of them had wives. They weren't married. I never played with my Ninja Turtles and I had them going to fight Shredder. And then Michelangelo was like, hey, can y'all give me two seconds? I don't know, my wife just showed up. I don't know how she found us, but she looks furious about something. I don't know, dude. I don't know, I don't know. And then she comes over and she's like, what are y'all doing? Who's this April chick? It's like, listen, she's a reporter. How about you not read into stuff, all right? How about you not check my Facebook? Is that possible? I got in trouble because uh, for my wife's birthday, I bought her an oven for her birthday. <laughs> yeah. Listen, here's why. Because like the vacuum, her other favorite toy as a kid was the Easy Bake Oven. So I was like, all right, I'll get her a legitimate big girl oven. <laughs> An adult oven, like that's not impressive. If she bought me a truck and it turned into a live robot, I would freak out and be like, this is the greatest gift I have ever had in my life. This is the best. I still play with the kid stuff. Uh, I uh, play a lot of video games and the thing with the video games, they're a lot different than when I played when I was younger. Cause uh, like I'll play Madden football and when you used to play Madden, as a kid, you would just pick your favorite team. That was it. There wasn't that much to it. But now when you play, they have you run in the whole stadium when you play. So before you start, they're like, all right, how much do you want to charge for hamburgers? And you're like, I don't even know how much a fake hamburger would go for. I didn't know we were getting this serious about the game. I didn't go to college. That's why I'm playing your game. And they give the players emotions. The players will argue with you. I'll use the Titans, I'll use Vince Young. And they're like, hey, Vince is not happy with his contract. Like, all right, well tell Vincent that he is not real. 
and I will reset this and start over if he does not clean up his attitude. I don't need him yelled at me. My wife is furious I'm playing this game. I don't need him bitching at me too. That's why I play this.